Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Dion, and today we're doing part three of my summer style analysis series, and we are doing the Sufjan Stevens slash European summer slash the call me by your name summer aesthetic. Now, if you are on like TikTok or Instagram, you've probably heard of the Sufjan Stevens summer or the European summer. And when I'm talking about this, I'm specifically talking about the movie Call Me By Your Name and the kind of aesthetics that came out of that. So before we get super into it, please make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post videos every Thursday. And with that, let's get into it. You lazily wake up in the morning to find that fresh juice was squeezed and breakfast has been made. You make your way downstairs and feel the warm summer air on your skin. You bike alone to the nearby town river and say hi to the locals. The cool water feels nice on your sunburned skin, and even though you're by yourself, you're happy. There's a melancholy sadness in the air as the person you love walks by and grazes your arm. Your heart flutters in excitement, but then follows with an ache knowing that it's just summer love. That these moments are finite and yet will last forever in your memory. You come home for dinner with your family and sip on wine while talking about the summer's activities. After you take a nice shower, put on your favorite pair of cotton boxers and read some poetry under a tree as the sun goes down, thinking about the love that could have been. So what is the Call Me By Your Name summer? Hi, it's Editing Dion. I'm just here to say that um, there is a creator on TikTok who has like an entire playlist on the Sufjan Stevens summer. She is sort of the expert on the matter. Lilac Laurels. Lilac Laurels has a whole playlist on um, the Sufjan Stevens summer and the dress code and the activities. So if you're very into this, highly recommend checking out her TikTok account and that playlist because she is definitely the expert on this. It's also called the Sufjan Stevens Summer, who, if you've never seen the movie, Call, you, Call Me By Your Name, he did most of the music for it. And so it's about the aesthetic and the vibe that he brought to that movie um, and just sort of what that movie is all about. Again, if you've never seen it, um, it is about a 17 year old boy that summers in Italy, in Northern Italy with his family and his dad brings a sort of teaching assistant. His dad is a professor um, and they fall in love and sort of know that it's only, you know, for the summer. And there's a melancholy and then a sadness and a heartbreak to it. It's a really beautiful movie. It does have problematic natures in it. I'm not gonna super get into the, the movie Call Me By Your Name because I feel like this aesthetic is less about the dynamics of the movie and more about the feelings that the movie gives you. But I do highly recommend it. It is a really good movie. Um, it's beautifully directed and written and the music and it just like, it's sad, but it's, it's really good. I would say this falls under the larger umbrella of the European summer. With European summer, you have like the city European summer. So think about like the Lizzie McGuire movie, Passport to Paris. Um, you're going on, going to Rome and a Vespa and like traveling to all these places and it's high and city and all of that energy. Or the Mediterranean summer, which is very, the movie Mamma Mia and you're in Greece or Croatia and you're swimming in blue water and it's farm-ish and arid and, more upbeat and beachy and then there's the call me by your name summer the sufjan steven summer which is a european summer but maybe you're in a small town maybe you're not near a beach um you're traveling and it's more instead of like being a tourist like going to all the amazing places in greece or in rome or wherever it's some place it's like a second home you live you have the locals it's more lackadaisical the Call Me By Your Name Summer also has a lot of similarities to the Lake Day Summer aesthetic that I did, which was the first summer video that I made. So um, definitely check that out. But it's much more low energy. So rather than being on a motorboat, going out with tons of friends, spending all day at the lake, you're much more alone um, and it's hanging out with the same two to four people. It also has some coastal grandmother energy just in the sense that it's about a lazy, calm summer. 
just slow living but there's a melancholy aspect to it a coming of age a new chapter is beginning vibe around it which is hard and it's achy and i'm definitely not speaking from personal experience <laughs> ah! it's about the simple summer adventures like biking long walks exploring hidden gems in the small town and developing crushes it's about not being an adult but not being a kid either and reckoning with that there's a loneliness isolation aspect to it. Vacationing with your parents or your family, being away from your school friends. So you feel like you're at home, but you're not at home. And you feel like you can make these strong relationships with the people that you spend summers with, but at the same time, you don't see them for nine months out of the year and that tearing and that void that they leave. Ooh, I'm gonna cry if I keep talking about this. In terms of movies that would fit and really give you um, this sort of summer vibe that I'm talking about, obviously, Call Me By Your Name. Again, there's a lot of problematic things about this movie. Um, I actually read the book, which is even more problematic. But in terms, it, it's also such a beautiful movie. Not only visually, but the the lessons and the the reality of, of heartache in the movie is it's really beautiful the music the directing the the fashion the the acting it's really um it tugs on your heartstrings movies that so also sort of give this bittersweet coming of age a love that won't last sort of aspect would be almost famous dazed and confused brokeback mountain even Mamma Mia, which would go under the more like Grecian European summer, the like fun, high energy, I feel like you could still get a lot from it. It's summer, I feel like definitely has sort of the same vibe. It's a little bit darker. Moonrise Kingdom by Wes Anderson, Dead Poet Society, Lady Bird, Summer of 85. These are movies that are about coming of age and the uncomfortableness of, of growing and changing over the summer. So some of the tenants of the Call Me By Your Name summer in, ter in terms of fashion, because there's definitely a very specific fashion style to it are short sleeve button ups, overalls, using boxers as shorts, Bermuda shorts or loose shorts. I feel like for femmes, Bermuda shorts, like a longer short um, is more common and for mask identifying people, short shorts. So you're sort of flipping the stereotype. So if you're, you're, if you're more mask, get a little short short, show some thigh. And if you're more femme, cover up a little bit. Do a little, do a little Bermuda short moment. Um, bold prints and colors, specifically jewel and earth tones and those late 80s, early 90s prints. Lots of loose linens, billowy shirts and dresses, brown sandals, beat up sneakers, specifically Converse, or just going barefoot. And lots of maxi dresses and um, skirts sort of bohemian influences I am. Here's my outfit, you know. So some criticisms of the Call Me By Your Name summer, besides the fact that the movie and the book that do have problematic natures is that, you know, of course it's very Eurocentric. The European summer is Eurocentric, <laughs> shock. But why is that bad? Why is um, fantasizing or romanticizing a European summer um, a criticism or a negative and of course it's not necessarily a criticism or a negative but we have to remember that the obsession with Europe and and European society and culture obviously there is merit to it there is I mean I've been to Italy twice I've been to France I've been to Austria and Hungary I mean these places are beautiful these places are are incredible but you know, they're the OG colonizers as well. And it's a known problem that people of color, specifically women of color, face a lot of dangers traveling to Europe. Lots of um, TikTokers have sort of their niche of traveling while black and what places have been safe, what places have been problematic. Um, I know specifically Germany for black women of color have, there's been a lot, there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. And the, Eurocentric fantasy in terms of vacationing feeds into the Eurocentric beauty standard. Culture feeds into beauty and fashion. And so we're obsessed with the culture. Naturally, we are also gonna get obsessed with the, the physical attributes of that culture, which are Eurocentric beauty standards. If we're obsessing over Northern Italy, France, part of that is also the white Western Eurocentric beauty standards that come around with it and, and the fashion standards. Eurocentricism 
in general eclipses a lot of the the problematic natures of European countries, including their racism. It's also very known that fat phobia in Europe is a very, very real thing. Again, Europeans, I don't wanna hear about how fat Americans are, I'm well aware. And also, it's none of your fucking business. But there have been a lot of articles about how traveling in Europe um, while fat is also Europeans openly staring and gawking at you if you're a person of color or if you're um, fat. And of course, there's a level of privilege that comes with not only being able to travel to Europe, but also feeling safe while traveling. So people of color, women, the queer community, plus size people, differently abled people, Call Me By Your Name is about two white boys. I mean, my best friend just came back from London and said that this guy just went over, grabbed her face, kissed her on the cheek, and then 15 minutes later kept trying to buy her a drink and eventually and was like, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? And then grabbed her drink, tasted it. And he's like, I know what this is. I'll order it for you. And she kept saying no. Um, and of course that's not a European problem that happens everywhere. But I'm saying that you are not a white man. Traveling becomes significantly harder. You know, we have a, a, a prejudice against Eastern Europe over Western Europe. So places like Ukraine, Hungary, all of that versus Italy, Paris. There's a lot of dynamics about here and I'm sure I'll get so many comments from Europeans that are like, Americans are so much more racist and you guys act rude when you're in our countries and you guys are uh, uh, uh. And listen, again, I hate this country. This country is so backwards and I, <laughs> you don't need to tell me. But the obsession with Western Europe, the fan fantasization and the fetishization almost of, of Western Europe um, and acting like that is the supreme, that is the best vacation, that is the best traveling experience. We can't exalt Europe and traveling to Europe and the European fantasy without understanding that also comes with um, Western Europe Eurocentric beauty standards and the conditioning that we've all been conditioned to idealize European beauty uh, standards. And of course, those European beauty standards hinge on white supremacy. So when we fetishize Europe and traveling to Europe, we also have to recognize that a lot of these, these fantasies um, stem from white supremacy. Uh, however, the point of so many aesthetics is that it is a fantasy. It's escapism. It's an aesthetic fantasy, sort of like Regency core. It's a fun dream um, to have, even though 90% of people other than white men in the Regency era were struggling pretty damn hard. But unlike Regency Corps, which happened long in the past, so we can rewrite history and we can, so it's over and done, so we can have that fantasy. The fat phobia, the racism, the colorism in Europe is still happening. And so that's where it kind of differs from like a Regency Corps, or even um, a cottage core, which is, romanticizing a time in the past that's over and done with and you can sort of rewrite history to make it more inclusive, more diverse, etc. But the the racism and the, the fat phobia and the misogyny is still happening um, in all in all countries. And so that's sort of where it differs from the fantasy escapism of Regency core or cottage core because yes, we can fantasize and have this escape, escapism fantasy of going to Europe but these problems are still very real and still actively happening as we speak. On the other half, I know that was a lot of criticisms, I will say I focus on fashion aesthetics which tend to be more woman, um, femme centric and Call Me By Your Name is a movie and a book about two gay men. And what I really like about this aesthetic is I feel like often I'm doing coquette, messy French girl, Regency core, which are very hyper feminine and about dresses and everything. And this aesthetic feels like it is so um, it's about gender fluidity um, and for non-binary people and for gender fluid people and for men who have, who may be watching this. This aesthetic is for everyone. You really, it's not about hyper femininity or dressing very stereotypically feminine. Um, so you can really, I think, play with gender expression and that's why I love like femmes are more in the Bermuda long shorts and masks are more in the kind of short shorts era, a gay friendly aesthetic and a non-binary friendly aesthetic. Of course, all, I mean, I want 
everyone to feel empowered to wear whatever they want. But I also understand that sometimes the aesthetics that I talk about might not align with your gender identity. And I feel like the Call Me By Your Name Summer um, has a lot of like gender neutral clothing. And so you can really, you can still express yourself and live this aesthetic without having to put yourself in a box of one gender or the other or um, sticking to strict gender rules because the movie and book that it's based on and the aesthetic itself lends itself to sort of gender bending, which I really appreciate. And not to mention, uh, a lot of us may be going through some heartache, some changes, and we might not want a hot girl summer and we might not feel like coastal grandmother, like I'll just garden and cook and it'll be happy and fun and light. And we might not wanna, maybe we don't live around a ton of our friends like we would um, like the lake day or camp counselor summer. I think a lot of us spend summer sort of by ourselves or with our family in um, maybe a summer house or something away from our school friends. And there is an isolation and loneliness aspect to it. And there's something beautiful about that bittersweet, melancholy loneliness and the fact that you sort of have summer to yourself and that the the relationships and the, the friendships and the crushes that you develop in the separate summer location, they won't la they may not last or be, they're different than the relationships that you have in your out of summer life. And there's again, definitely a melancholy aspect to it of the summer ending, summer beginning, not wanting to crush too hard because you know it's gonna be ripped away from you in two months. There is something really, really beautiful about all of that. And summer is about coming of age and changing and growing and starting a new chapter. Okay, I don't wanna cry. Again, with these summer aesthetics, a lot of it is more like vibes and I, have been enjoying getting away from the hyper consumerism and focusing more on the lifestyle aspect of these. Before we get into the summer bucket list, which um, each of my summer style analysis, analysis series comes with a bucket list at the end. So um, if you really wanna live that summer fantasy, definitely stick to the end of the video. But in terms of summer outfits, I know I mentioned the tenants, but it's about being loose and cool and sort of not matching or messy and, you know, you wanna be able to go into a church, a restaurant, a bar, but you also wanna be able to swim in a lake, a river. So loose linens, loose fabrics, sort of, it sort of has some camp counselor vibes to it. Again, lots of polos, button down shorts, so it can go femme or mask, depending on how you choose to express yourself. Lots of maxi skirts and maxi dresses. Again, adding in, you could go formal wine tasting, but you can also go very, just like I'm going to the beach, I'm slipping on something loose and comfortable. I hope this uh, these outfit inspiration posts, mood boards um, that I found on Pinterest sort of give you more of an idea of dressing for the Call Me By Your Name summer. So now for the bucket list. Number one, pick fresh fruit or go to a farmer's market and get fresh local fruit. Apricots and peaches have very significant um, representation in the Call Me By Your Name um, movie and book. I mean, obviously summer is the time for fruit. So whether you live in like New England and it's strawberry season, or if you live in Miami and it's mango season, or in California and it's avocado season, or in Georgia and it's peach season. I mean, it's seasonal local fruit. If you could pick it off the tree, that is the best, most call me by your name, Sufjan Stevens, European summer vibe. But if not, go to a local farmer's market. And following that, create a cocktail or a mocktail using the local fruit. So mango, apricot, peach, even if you just make a juice, I don't drink alcohol but using that fresh fruit and drinking and having like fresh juice in the morning is like just such a, a Sufjan Stevens summer summer vibe. Read under a tree by some water. You know, just be be that main character that's like sad and everyone else is playing in the water but you're reading poetry. Practice a new language and call me by your name. Uh, the characters speak two, three languages. And so think about maybe if you're gonna spend the summer so more so by yourself, either your friends are gone or you're away from your friends. Think about um, learning a new language or practicing the language that you already know. I really wanna learn some basic sign language. And again, I'm going to um, Denmark and Sweden over the summer. So I do obviously wanna pick up on a few things like, you know, where's the train or 
do you speak English? Like those certain things. I understand that most people in Denmark and Sweden speak English, but I don't, also don't want to like be the ignorant American that's like, you need to speak my language. I want to like try to adapt. <laughs> Invite friends over for an outdoor cheese board, cookout, dinner party, but like outdoor dining essentially. So even if you're just going outside in your backyard um, or your terrace or your balcony and sipping on wine and eating some crackers, but and having like an outdoor get together, an outdoor dining or drinking experience. Go to a place that you've never been. And I mean, this can be no matter where you live. Drive to a secret gem. There's a website called Only In Your State that you can find like really cool, unique things in your state or places you've never been, Instagrammable places near you. But just go on a, a quick car ride, a bike ride, a train ride, a bus ride, whatever you can do. Um, to a new place and just kind of explore your your surroundings no matter where you're spending your summer. Ask someone out on a picnic date. I said ask someone out because you don't want to just like wait around all summer waiting for you for someone to ask you on a picnic date. So I want to empower you to 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 ask someone to do that and to ask if you you know if they want to go on a picnic and get the fresh fruit and spend time outside and all of that. Go dancing all night. I am such a um, a morning person. I never stay out all night, but I definitely, like when I'm in Copenhagen, I definitely want to go dancing all night and that warm summer air at three in the morning. Like I want a few of those, ex maybe not three in the morning, like maybe one in the morning, but like I want some of those experiences even as a, as a morning person. And I think that is just, that is so summer that you're, I don't know, I just being out all night and it's warm and you're tired and you're happy at the same time and you know you have nothing to do tomorrow because it's summer, like that vibe, you gotta have those experiences, even if you're someone like me that can't stay out past like 10 p.m. Go on a biking adventure. Um, you can rent bikes, you can even borrow a bike if you know someone with a bike that's not using it that day, if you don't have one. Yeah, go on a biking, like bike riding in the summer, there ain't nothing like it. I mean, it's just, there is something so youthful and and freeing about it. Not having to have a car, but also having transportation. So I, I definitely encourage you to like, make a point of like, I'm gonna bike places this summer rather than drive or whatever. And the last thing is to do something special for the summer solstice, um, midsummer or whatever. June 21st is when that happens and it's the longest day of the year. So maybe that's the day that you have your outdoor dinner party cookout and you invite your friends over. Or maybe that's the day you have the picnic date. Maybe that's the day you go on the biking adventure. But again, celebrating um, what summer means. And I think that's really what the Sufjan Stevens summer is about. It's not just the, the positive sides of summer, but knowing that summer is a finite feeling, knowing that it's only three months, knowing that it's an exciting, and life-changing um, time of the year, but also that it's so fleeting and that you want to enjoy it as much as you can, but you also feel it slipping through your fingers every day that time passes. Whew, so with that um, emotional note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it. Um, Call Me By Your Name is one of my favorite movies and I definitely identify with this summer probably the most because A, I am traveling to Europe, B, um, I am sort of going through a moment of change and growth right now. A lot of things are happening. I'll be celebrating the Sufjan Stevens summer next week, maybe not next week, but the next Summer Style Analysis series is gonna be on the Key West Kitten, which is the Coconut Girl Mako Mermaid aesthetic. Um, that's the last summer aesthetic that I have in my mind. So if you have other summer aesthetics you want me to cover, please leave a comment down below. And what type of summer are you trying to have this summer? Are you trying to be a Key West Kitten? Are you doing a Sufjan Stevens Bittersweet Summer? Are you having a lake day, hanging out with your friends all summer type of summer? Are you gonna be Coastal Grandmother, low key vibes? definitely let me know or something else. Um, I would love to hear about it. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up because it helps out my channel a lot and subscribe if you do. Um, if you do like my fashion and personality, make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram because I post content there almost every single day. And with that, have a happy, happy day.